Hi guys and welcome to today's video on, now it's a really long title, Determining Rules for Graphs of Exponential and Logarithmic Functions. Wow, this video could be over before I'd even finished the title. Well, maybe not. First question of the day, why mosquitoes? What you don't realise is, I'm currently sitting here bitten to death by mosquitoes and I get really badly infected by these little so-and-sos. So, -and -sos. so uh, yeah, if you know the answer to why mosquitoes exist, leave a comment below, okay? If not, just leave me to uh, wallow in my depression. Now, if you're new to my channel, I don't normally start like this, I promise. I normally start like this. Hi, see that red arrow over there? Would you do me a favor and click it? Because I am making no money from any of these videos. I'm not doing it for that. Uh, but if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel, then at least it lets me know that you're out there watching and I'm not sitting in a room talking to myself, which to be perfectly honest with you is weird. That's the needy stuff over. Let's get into the maths by looking at what we're going to learn today. Now, at the top of this, you'll see above me with a red arrow saying something along the lines of the learning. We have so far in our previous videos looked at exponential functions, logarithms by actually being given equations and having to solve them or sketch them or transform them or all those very exciting things we tend to do. We've not yet been given a graph of an exponential and said, can you tell me what the function is? That's very much what this video is all about. And there are three main functions you need to know. That are those three there. Y equals AE to the X plus B and the other two, which this video will go through examples of if this is what a graph looks like, what information do they need to give me for me to be able to find the actual function, not that form. Obviously the A and the B in that first function would need to be found. But we're gonna recap on a little bit of algebra first. I'm gonna write down this, three X, plus 4y is equal to negative 6, and 2x minus 3y is equal to 13. And I'm going to say to you, what are they? And you're going to go, equations. And I'm going to go, why are you talking to me? I can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's weird. I'm talking to you as if you're there. Anyway, they are indeed equations, but they're simultaneous equations. And what are simultaneous equations? Yeah, no, nah, I'll wait for you again, but no. Nah. Simultaneous equations are the equations of two straight lines which hopefully will intersect at a point. But more importantly, not only are they two equations, they are two equations with how many unknowns? Two, absolutely, and when you look at those equations, there's an x value and a y value. Now the great thing about maths is when I have two unknowns, so long as I have two equations, I should, all going well, be able to solve them. If I have three equations, I would need three unknowns, or if there were three unknowns, I would need three equations, and so it goes on. Now, in this situation, we can use our CAS calculator, we can do elimination, we can do substitution, we can do graphical methods. I'm sure there are other ways that we could do to solve this. Matrices uh, is another one. But the point of that is slightly to one side. I want you to realize that the X and the Y stand for something. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, if we look at this equation here, what do we have? We have how many unknowns? Oh yes, because it says above, we have four unknowns. So from what I've just been saying, we could possibly need four equations to help us solve that. Yes, but four equations seems a little bit excessive, don't you think? Firstly, what are my unknowns? They are Y, they are A, they are X, and they are B. Y, A, B. X and B. Mm, interesting. There are two letters there that sound wildly familiar. And absolutely they are wildly familiar because this Y value and this X value, when they're linked together, are otherwise known as a, yup, a coordinate. Yeah, now actually, as I say, and I'm fond of saying all the time, math is a huge trick. And I'm going to tell you now that lots and lots of times in methods three and four and all sorts of areas of mathematics, you will be given coordinates in all sorts of random ways. They might be explicit and actually say to you, here is a coordinate, three comma four, or they may turn around and say, ah, oh, a graph crosses the Y axis at the point seven. Ooh, now there is, they've used language to describe a particular point, but wherever you see a coordinate, it actually reduces the number of equations we need. So look at this example here, which is extracted from the Cambridge Essentials textbook, which is a fabulous series of textbooks. If you don't have it, run out and buy one. I'm using it to teach my students, and they have very kindly said I can use these examples. So what it says is we've been given a graph, we've been given an equation, so if I write my equation out slightly bigger, y equals ae to the x plus b. 
And what have they given me on my diagram? Well, they've told me there's an asymptote there, but I don't know the equation of the asymptote. They've given me two coordinates, and that's actually the key to all of these questions, those coordinates, because what they're giving me in code is an x value and a y value. So if I now look at the value 0, 6, the first thing to note is make sure you get your x and the y the right way around. The number of people who get those the wrong way around is actually fairly terrifying, and you'll crash and burn. So where I see y, I'm going to put so 6 is equal to a e to the 0 plus b. So there's first equation. I've now got 3, comma 22. So 22 is equal to a e to the 3 plus b. Now, you're already saying to me, oh, e to the 0, it's 1, it's 1, and I know that. Thank you. So I'm going to write 6 is equal to a plus b here, and I'm going to come back to that in a moment. You're going to say, oh, how do you know you're going to come back to it? And I'm going to say to you, I've recorded this video three times. My camera died on me on one of them, and I pretty much just carked it on the other. For what you don't realize is here in Australia, if you're watching elsewhere, it's a 30-something degree day, and I'm currently surrounded in a darkened room with studio lightings that is absolutely pumping up the power and the heat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use substitution, uh, sorry, elimination, simultaneous equations to help me find these values. You could bang it in your calculator, and maybe in a moment I'll do an example where we do that. But let's call this equation number one. Let's call this equation number two, and I'm going to work out two minus one. So taking the first equation away from the second equation, the b's cancel out. Thank you very much. And then I get a e to the three minus a. Now I'm going to simplify that e to the zero to one. And you're going to say, stop, hold on a moment, where is my one term? And I'm going to say to you, this is methods, this is more complicated, and we are more than able to have that type of expression. Work with me and I'll show you. 22 minus 6 is 16, and there is my first line. Now, I'm trying to find the value of a and b. What can you see? Well, I've got two a's. And as I am very fond of saying my Spice Girls, two become one. Yay! So I'm actually going to factorise that and give me a is e to the 3 minus 1, which gives me that a is equal to 16 divided by e to the 3 minus 1. Now, if you wanted to, you could bang that into your calculator and come up with a decimal representation, but I wouldn't. Particularly over here in Australia with methods, you would be looking for an exact value, and that is about as exact as you're going to get it. It also doesn't help us to actually round it to decimal places because we're going to lose some accuracy. So there's my value of a. How do I find my value of b? Well, we can go back to that equation you mentioned slightly earlier, this one here. So I know that 6 is equal to 16 on e to the 3 minus 1 plus b, or b is now 6 minus 16 on e to the 3 minus 1. Now that's simplifiable, so I'm going to simplify it. There's a great word. So I'm going to get 6 lots of e to the 3 minus 1 minus 16 all on e to the 3 minus 1. So b becomes 6e to the 3 minus 6 minus 16, all on e to the 3 minus 1. So I've just put them over a common denominator. And now I'm going to simplify my value of b to give me 6e to the 3 minus 22 on e to the 3 minus 1. And I finished my question, yes, because I've got my value of a and b. And I'm going to say, uh, no, always important to make sure that you read the question. And the question here says, find the values of a and b. Oh, oh, I have, I have. Isn't that awesome? I found the values of a and b, but what I'm actually going to do is substitute them back in, because in some questions it'll actually say substitute them back in. So we now know my final equation is y equals a, which is 16 on e to the 3 minus 1, times e to the power of x, plus my value of b, which is 6e to the 3 minus 22, over e to the 3 minus 1. Now, if you're looking at that going, that's disgusting. Hopefully, you're not talking about me. Chill. It's genetics. I can't help it. But that's what methods is. There's no real difference here between doing that question as a year 10 question and what you've just done here. Just the numbers and letters have changed. All right, here's a second example. We're going to work through one for each of my different equations. And again, same question taken from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series. This time we'll be given a logarithm function. Does it change the way we work it out? No, not at all. We have y is equal to a log e of x plus b. Do you see what they've given me in my equation? A y and an x. Look at your diagram. Can you see any y's and x's? Oh, you should go, go. Here is one, and here is another. They give me two coordinates, which is a minimum they're going to need to give me for this particular equation. Why? Because there are four unknowns. 
And so if I'm given two unknowns, then I actually only need two equations to find out the other two unknowns. So let me go. Let's so for my coordinate position a comma one, we know that one is equal to a times the log of e of x. Uh, sorry, no, we know what x is, eight plus b, and we know that zero for my next uh, coordinate, which is five comma zero, is equal to a log e of five plus b. Right, I could bang this into my calculator, and I did on a previous video, I'm, trust me, it was horrible. Yes, in the sense of my calculator just took longer to do that than it did to do it by pen and paper. So moving it up, what am I going to be able to do here? Well, the first thing I can do is I can take this equation here, and I'm going to say, right, well, if I have a times log e of 5 plus b equals 0, I'm going to divide both sides by a which is awesome because that gives me the log base e of 5 plus b is equal to, oh, 0. Yay! That made no difference. How do I get rid of that log e now? Well, I raised everything to the power of e. So 5 plus b is now e to the 0. Did you see why I did that? Oh, I should go, go, because e to the 0 is in fact 1. And so we can now beautifully say that b is equal to negative 4. If I know that... Can I then find my value of a? Yes, I should go-go, because we know that uh, a times the log e of 8 plus b must be equal to 1. All right, so we know that a times the log of e of 8 minus 4 is 4 is equal to 1, and so a is 1 over the log base e of 4. And so, is that the end of my question? Well, looking at the question, what did it say? It said, find the values of a and b. So actually, as per the question, yes, it's finished, but I'm just going to substitute the values in for completeness. So y was equal to a, which is 1 over log e of 4 times log e of uh, x minus 4. Ladies and gentlemen, that is my final equation. Again, does that look disgusting? No more than, I suppose, myself looking in the mirror, but that's a whole new discussion. And we've got one more example to do before we can call this video a day. Do you notice they've not given me a graph here? No, of course they haven't, because they don't have to. It's nice if they do, so long as they give me two coordinates. And what they've told me here is y equals 6 when t equals 1, and y equals 8 when t equals 2. Now, you're going to say, hold on a moment, there's not a y and an x value doesn't have to be. Remember, all we need to do is look at my equation. y is equal to a e to the bt. How many unknowns do I have? Four. Remember, e, we already know it's Euler's number. Yes? So I have four unknowns. But in this situation, they're giving me a y versus a t. So I now know that y equals 6 when t equals 1. So I'm now going to say 6 is equal to a e to the b times 1. Well, b times 1 I don't need to worry about because it's just b. And then what was the other one? y is equal to 8 when t is equal to 2. Let's write that properly. When t equals 2. So again, 8 is equal to a e to the 2b. Right, I have two equations, and you're going to say, how do I solve those? And again, we solve it using uh, a bit of an algebra trick. Again, use your calculator. Test it on your calculator if you need to. But remember, over here in Australia, there are non-calculator papers where you still have to be able to demonstrate doing this by hand. And this is a trick I learned. 8 is equal to a e to the 2b. And I'm going to write under here, 6 is equal to a e to the b. And you'll say, what are you doing? Well, in this situation here, I'm actually going to divide my two terms. You can do that in the same way as you could subtract them from each other. You can actually divide them. Mind blown. How awesome is that? Why am I going to do that? It's because my a's are now going to cancel. That's nice. And when I have e to the 2b divided by e to the b, remember, when those powers are the same or when the um, bases are the same and we're dividing, we subtract the powers. So I find out that 8 on 6 is equal to e to the b. Take logs of both sides, which gives me, and let's do a little bit of cancelling, 4 on 3. We now know that e to the b is 4 on 3, which gives me b is log base e of 4 on 3. Yay! How do I find my value of a? Well, substitute it in. We know that 6 is equal to a times e to the b. And we said b was the log base e of 4 on 3. 
Well, when we've got e to the power of log e, they effectively cancel each other out. So we have 6 is equal to a times 4 on 3. Oh, I like this. Multiply that out. It gives me 18 is equal to 4a. a is equal to 18 on 4, which is 9 on 2. And so my final equation becomes y is equal to a, which was 9 on 2, uh, e to the power of log e. 4 on 3 times t. Now you can't cancel those logs out there because log e of 4 on 3 is an actual physical constant. We need to keep that in. Again, looks disgusting, but that was more the algebra. and That's more methods trying to make it look disgusting. The tricks, the algebra are all uh, used in something you've done previously. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's zip through this with a 45 second preview. All for Twitter. Go figure. Oh, you're following me on Twitter? Instagram, there's too many, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, what have we been dealing with today? Determining the rules of graphs for exponential and logarithmic functions which took longer to actually say than it did this video. We looked at the idea that there were three particular type of logs or exponential functions that if we know the general form, we can actually solve using a little bit of algebra. We touched on simultaneous equations and we said that when we had simultaneous equations, we had two unknowns and hence two equations. So the same was true here. As long as I was given an equation and some coordinates I can put into it actually hint two coordinates, I could substitute them in. So we did an example with exponentials, we did an example with logarithms, and we did an example where they didn't actually give me a graph at all, they just gave me some stuff. The maths looks revolting, but we decided it was all like year 10. And breathe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of this video. It is as ever fabulous having you here watching along with me. Uh, hopefully it's made sense. If it has, leave a comment below, leave a like, and uh, you know what I'm going to ask now, don't you? Oh yes, can you do me a favour and subscribe with that doohickey over there. If not, you are a tough, tough crowd. Click that button, please, please, please. Otherwise, there's a video loading for you to watch along the similar lines. All right, it's been good. I look forward to seeing you next time. Maths Guru, out.